everybody, it's Brandon the Weekend Cruiser where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend and I just finished up my residency, if you will, on the MSC Magnifica. And when I went there originally, I made a video saying what were my initial impressions, what were my initial thoughts. Now after six sailings on the MSC Magnifica and 18 nights at sea on her, I wanted to come and update you on my final thoughts on the MSC Magnifica. Now the unfortunate part of this is I was supposed to be there for 10 sailings or 30 nights and unfortunately I had to cut some of those due to prioritization at the time. Let's call it that. Not sure it was necessarily the right prioritization, but I feel good about the decisions I made and I chose to cancel those. So now I have less experience, but still, I mean, 18 nights on a weekend sailing gives me six different versions of that ship that I can share with you my opinions. So the first thing, and I mentioned this in the initial video, she is a small ship. So if you're going to the Magnifica, especially if you've been cruising on a lot of other ships, you want to keep in mind she is small. She's only 95,000 gross tons, which is teeny. There is one pull outside, very, very small. Think like Virgin Voyage is small. And then you're going to have another one in their solarium area that you can also enjoy. But you're not going to have a ton of amenities. There's one specialty restaurant. It's a small ship. So if you keep that in mind, you'll have a good time. The other thing that I'll say is, you know, there's only 3,200 people there. Not a ton. The ship does not feel crowded to me. Unless the theater show is letting out or everybody's lining up to go to the dining room, it never felt crowded. Or if you're going to the buffet during a peak breakfast or lunch hour, yeah, then it's going to feel a little bit more crowded, but only at those times. And those are easy to avoid. The ship decor, this is something that I called out as just being different. And it took me a little bit of time to get used to it, but the ship has certainly grown on me and the way that it looks. So it's got lots of animal prints. Think tigers, the tiger bar, the Tapezio lounge. They're all in these really, really, I don't know if it's a vibrant, um, a vibrant pattern that it's using, but it is definitely a very loud pattern that it is using. And when I first got there, I was like, oh wow, like that's a lot of, lot of tiger, but it has grown on me. They've also got some rooms with a lot of like deeper purple upholstery or chairs. And I just thought the color structure was, it was nice. It was more contemporary feeling. I hope that it stands up over time, but I enjoyed it and the ship design grew on me. This ship is, by the way, since it is small, super easy to navigate. So if you get lost easily, you're gonna be fine on this ship. Now let's talk about the shows on board this ship. The ones that are in the main theater, there are three that they do during the weekends. From when I started to when I stopped on the Magnifica, they changed a little bit. So initially they had one show that was an Elvis tribute. I wasn't a huge fan of, so I did not miss it when that left, but they replaced it with a show called Cameo, which was actually really good. I really enjoyed the shows on the Magnifica. I know I said that in the initial one that I was kind of blown away by the talent that they had on the stage, but it felt like I was at a concert. Everybody in the audience is singing along. The singers and dancers are asking you to sing along. It is a really energetic time and it is fun. I like that interactivity that the cast members or the singers and dancers had with the people sitting in the audience. They really pulled us into their show and felt us feel like we were a part of it. I really enjoyed that throughout the entire sailing. I went and sat on the front row just about every single time because I loved it so much. Now let's talk about the food on board the MSC Magnifica. I got a chance to have many meals on her and I ate more food than I probably should have. And so my go-to on the MSC Magnifica was the buffet. That was my favorite spot to go, super easy, beautiful outdoor section. That's where you would always find me at breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'm sitting outside with my rather large plate of food and their food was good at the buffet. I enjoyed it. It wasn't even that it was mediocre. I enjoyed the food that they had at the buffet. MSC is also going through a phase where they are changing up their buffet options. And that I could see as I went on different cruises and they were making good changes. So I know MSC you're asking for our feedback. I like the changes that you're making. I think the food is good and is improving as you've made these updates. I went down to the main dining room for two of the cruises to hang out. And the first time that I went, the food was okay. I did that on the initial video. The food was fine. I went again two cruises ago on them with when a friend of mine was sailing with me and the food was much better. It had stepped up in quality. First of all, they've added a poke bowl to their first night as an appetizer and it is, it is fantastic. I highly recommend the poke bowl. That is my favorite thing that was there and the food was okay, the rest of it. It was nothing to write home about. I always ask the people at the table, how's it going? What do you think of the food? And it was okay. Nobody was blown away, but nobody said that it was bad either. They were like, yeah, that was, that was a fine meal. Like it was good. 
I will, however, or I do need to mention, I should say, that during the sailings that I was going on, they did get an updated CDC health report where the CDC came on board the Magnifica to do an inspection, and she did earn an 86 which for cruise ships in this category, that is considered satisfactory. So they have satisfactory and unsatisfactory, but an 86 is the lowest that you can get without going into the unsatisfactory one. Now I'm gonna to post to the actual CDC report. They give that to us to see what the findings are. There were a lot of really minor things, like one of the pizza ovens was missing a screw. That was a finding. Um, so. I never got sick on it, wasn't anything that bothered me, but hopefully now that they've gotten that, I'm confident they've sent their entire crew over to the Magnifica to figure out what's going on and make sure that all those issues are resolved. The people on board this ship, now seeing six different ships, it definitely changes a little bit with the dynamic every single cruise. But with Magnifica, I found that it was actually pretty consistent on the type of people that were going on here. First of all, all nationalities are there. I've never heard so many spoken languages on the MSC Magnifica, even on the short weekend sailings, as I did it, you hear French, German, Russian, Spanish, English, you're hearing all of the languages on this ship. Though I will say that it is a very Latin ship. On the last sailing that I went on, it was probably 80% Latino. And so if you're coming to a Florida port, specifically Miami, and you're sailing on a weekend, it's gonna reflect the population of people in that port. So that is the main reason for that. But there is still a lot of other nationalities that are coming to the Magnifico. It's also, as much as a weekend cruise, I don't think that this is as much of a booze cruise as some of the other cruise lines that I've been on. It is more groups where, family groups, where they have the drink package, but I feel like they're drinking a lot more responsible. The age range also seemed to be a little bit more senior than I've seen on, let's say Royal Caribbean, for instance. They are more 30s and 40s and higher, and not as much in that 20 year old range. So even though their drink package is there, if you haven't seen the video, make sure you're watching this out so you can see which one will fit you well on MSC. That really, there wasn't a lot of people abusing the drink package. And so I think that that is a good thing, and I enjoyed, a, I don't know if quieter is right, but a more tame <laughs> cruising weekend environment. Now let's talk about the itinerary that the MSC Magnifica has been running. So when I started, it was doing Key West and it was doing Ocean Key, the MSC private island or their marine reserve. And this is a fantastic itinerary. I think it is by far my favorite weekend itinerary that exists. It is fantastic. Unfortunately, they closed down the Ocean Key Marine Reserve in order to do some refurbishment and work behind the scenes. And so we were going to Nassau and Key West. That has changed in this past cruise. I was able to go back to Ocean Key and Key West, which again is an amazing itinerary. It also did an overnight while we were at Ocean Key. And that is also another amazing week. Not as good as going to Key West and Ocean Key, but an overnight in Ocean Key is the, my second favorite, I would say. So what am I gonna miss from the MSC Magnifica? There's a few things that I'm gonna miss. The first thing I'm gonna miss is the outdoor seating in the buffet. Um, that was just my hangout spot. I was on the farm there because you know I don't buy the Wi-Fi package. Make sure you watch this video here on that. And so I'll sit outside and I had Wi-Fi for a good bit on the ship. I'm gonna miss that space. The food at the buffet, by the way, I'm gonna miss that too. I find that it is probably one of my favorite buffets right now. And it's probably coming up there with Celebrities Buffet, which I like a lot. This is a really good buffet too that I have certainly enjoyed. I'm also gonna miss all the shows that they have on this ship. So when you walk around the Magnifica, it is a small ship, but literally every room that you go into has another live musician playing. Whether it's jazz, it's country, it's Latin, it's all sorts of different stuff. Caribbean, you find it all throughout the ship and it's a small ship, so you're constantly getting to interact with this live and upbeat music and it changes the atmosphere and makes it a really fun place to be. The last thing that I'm gonna mention, the price. I am definitely gonna miss the price of the MSC Magnifica. I was booking her for $300 most of the time, including port fees and taxes, but definitely under $400, including port fees and taxes. All the ones I have coming up later this year in 2025, they're gonna be much more expensive than that. I'm hitting up more around the $500, $600 range on most of my weekend sailings. And so I'm really going to miss the price point that the MSC Magnifica came at. What I will not miss on board the MSC Magnifica, what I am good leaving behind is, first of all, their gym. I know, nobody cares, but the gym here is super small. It has one bench. That is all in just a handful of equipment. 
it is just a sad gym to go to. So I am not gonna miss the MSE Magnifico whatsoever when it comes to the gym. I'm also not gonna miss the main dining room. And I don't say that necessarily because I didn't enjoy the food. There was just, I had a mental block for some reason on, I didn't want to go to the main dining room on the Magnifico. I think because they were sitting me as a solo cruiser at a table with other solo cruisers, I don't know. I, th I think I got in my head over it, and so I just didn't go there that much. And I was having a really good time up in the in the buffet area, so why not just keep a good thing going? From there, I'm definitely not gonna miss the lounge chairs. Luckily, for the weekend cruises, you don't need them that much because you're in port every single day, and the chairs at Ocean Key are much better. So I didn't ever, I don't think that I ever, did I sit in a chair? I don't think that I ever sat in a lounge chair. Maybe on Sail Away or something like that where I wanted to see South Beach, but I don't think that I ever really did that. And the other thing that I was gonna say, and this was a big one, is I was gonna say I will not miss the mustard drill there because they close everything, the gym, the bars, the food. You can do nothing during the hour that mustard drill is taking place. But as of my last sailing, MSC, you have fixed, you've heard our feedback and you have fixed the mustard drill. And so they left everything open. They just trusted you to go swipe your card at the right station, dial the phone number on the phone to record that you watched the video and you're good to go. So much better process. Kudos to MSC for figuring that out. All right, everybody. So this concludes the video on, you know, my final review, if you will, for MSC Magnifica. As you can tell, I enjoyed my experience over there. And I've got one more later on this year to go back. And I'm just going to check up on her and make sure she's keeping things on the up and up over there. All right, everybody, it's Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser. Hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon. And if you ever want to cruise with me, make sure you're checking out the Group Cruise newsletter down below so you know about where we're going and how you can join.